and you wonder why the pipes are banging. That's the wet return. Do you have a steam heating system in your home? Are you tired of those pipes banging like crazy? And maybe even you have water, water, spewing out of those little silver things, which we call steam radiator air valves on the side of each radiator. If you got banging in your pipes, and you got water spewing out of those steam radiator air valves, this is a video you're not gonna wanna miss. My name is Mike Dyack. I'm the licensed master plumber for Pipe Doctor. We're based in Valley Stream, sorry, Woodmere, New York, Charleston, South Carolina, and real soon, Central Florida. You're not gonna wanna miss this video, guys. Thank you so much. Smash that thumbs up button in advance. And any questions or comments or concerns, drop a comment down in the comment section down below, or you can email me, Mike, at MikeyPipes.com. Thank you so much. Let's get on with today's video. All right, we got a Burnham Independence gas-fired steam boiler. I can see that this is an SIN5, 145,000 BTU. Uh, sorry, 140,000 BTU gas-fired steam boiler. Customer's complaint is that there are multiple radiators, steam radiators, that are letting out water, some with intensity, some not with intensity, out of steam radiator air valves. You know, those little silver things, sometimes they're round, sometimes they look little barrel-ish. Um, interesting situation here. So another company condemned the wet return, which is here. Here, here's the end of one of our steam mains. There's a steam main air valve right there. Into the quarter piping. And then at one point, a couple years ago, someone took out this section of wet return and put in one inch. Here's the end of our second drop. Right there, sorry. Right there. So we should have a steam main right there. Uh, but they replaced the inch and a quarter with one inch. And they only replaced a little bit of it. So there's that other room here. Here is a, I guess they did this to kind of help with condensate. Um, this is technically a dry return because it's above the water line of the boiler, but it is our return, our condensate return. As that steam cools and it condenses back into a liquid, it makes its way back to the boiler with this pipe. There. All right, so to help with our diagnosis, we're using the FLIR-1 thermal imaging camera. See, we got some nice steam right there. So what makes me convert this estimate service call into a service call is that the radiator on the second floor up there is spitting out water. This one is not. The one here isn't, but the one over there is. The one on this floor is fine, but the one up there is not. And the one on the second floor upstairs bedroom is not, but that one is. And I'm willing to wager. Okay, looks like we're gonna have a low water condition in a minute. All right, nothing yet though. Nothing yet. It's curious to think, because where's all of our water going? Where's all of our water going? Peter? No steam. No steam, okay. I sent Peter outside, look at the top of the chimney, see if it was letting out steam. That would indicate a uh, defective or cracked heat exchanger, which is the block inside there. But we're good with that. Our water level is uh, it's kind of gone. So that condensate is not making its way back to the boiler. All right, so here's that return for the first main. And if we take a look at our thermal imaging camera, we have nothing. What you see there is a reflection off the uh, BX right there. We have nothing there. This is cold. This right? pipe is hot. Here comes our banging sounds. It would help if everything was insulated, but it's not. So this return 
is kind of like nothing. And that banging sound is water where it shouldn't be. This whole return is fine. This is making its way back to the boiler, but I wonder when they abated the asbestos, did things shift or change here? But we you know this is this is good. All right. But the other there one is a not. very little amount of water in there. We have five psi on our pressure gauge. Our pressure troll is set to two psi, and that is reading differential of okay 0.75, and a reading five psi on our pressure gauge. The either the gauge is wrong or the pressure troll is bad. Something's wrong. Um, so let's pop our relief valve. Yep, so we got some pressure there. Um, let's kill power to the boiler. And let's take off our pressure troll. Right, let's carefully spin this off. Carefully. Is there a rag nearby? Mm. You have a rag? Just in case. Not my first day at the rodeo, and any water gets that low water cutoff, I'm not, I don't feel like buying her a low water cutoff. <laughs> All right. Our pressure gauge is quite suspect. Our water level came back. All right, Peter. Just put that over the low water cutoff and watch yourself. Matter of fact, do me a favor. Pop the relief valve over there. Sure. Keep it popped. Yeah, see how much pressure comes out. Not much. Okay. Here we go. Okay. What do you think? Think the bad boy's clogged? Mm. Peter, are you hitting the pipe with the hammer? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna fast forward, I don't know, four or five days. Change of plan. We were gonna put in a flush valve here. We were gonna put a flush valve in over there, one on that three quarter inch pipe, and on the wet return on the boiler, one right there. But because of just cost constraints, um, we're not so gonna. So instead, do that. on this two inch, we're gonna take a two by inch and a quarter um, mega press reducing coupling. We're gonna put a nipple here. Um, we're gonna use an inch and a quarter Webstone IPS flush valve, and then we're gonna size down to inch and a quarter on copper running across here. Okay, we have about 14, 15 feet. We're gonna come across, make this turn, all right, in copper, which will be um, um, pro press, and then here adapt to our one inch. So the objective here is just to replace this one line right here. Um, looks like we're gonna have, probably have to cut out one of these studs, but it is what it is, they're renovating the whole basement. All right, so we knocked out this two by, this two by, and that one right there. I need to get enough room behind this two inch pipe where I can get my two inch jaw behind it, which is right there. You'll see in a minute, it's gonna be a little bit of a difficult uh, proposition to accomplish, but nonetheless, look at my wet return. I just cut that with my two inch, ban um, my Milwaukee bandsaw, this inch and a quarter pipe, and she is plugged, plugged plugged solid she looks like i don't know a heart attack victim's arteries look at that that is insane that is absolutely ridiculous right there that is insane and you wonder why the pipes are bad peter you want to say hi to nana claire uh if you're watching hello nana claire. hi nana claire <laughs> so i just started cutting this two inch and not really thinking we didn't really get that much of a, a mess here but all that crazy banging and all that water that needs to try to come out of the boiler, or out of the, the return, end of the line, back to the boiler, well, it's all stuck here because of that right there. Um, I guess if I wanted to, oh, if we had a bigger stick, well, if we had like a little schmeckle, we could just jump it in there, but um, because we're going to be there for a while. <laughs> oh, man. So. The process of how this works, right? You have your boiler and you have, you come up 18 inches off the top of the boiler as high as you can, right? And then you connect to your wet return. I'm sorry, you connect to your Hartford loop in the side of the boiler, which is create, which creates your equalizer. 
And then everything in there is usually, to a point, pitched away from the boiler or pitched the opposite from the boiler. So that way, condensate can return back. So at this point here, this is the low point, which is right there. See that? With that aero seal um, asbestos pipe insulation? It's right there. We're not touching it, so it's okay. We're not violating any OSHA rules by not disturbing it. This column, right? There's a water column here. It's filled with water. And so when that boiler comes on, right, we're getting steam traveling at 40, 45 miles an hour, traveling through that pipe, hits this water, violently explodes. The water, that is, right? Because it's, it's where it shouldn't be. So the moral, what I'm trying to say right now is, if you got steam in your home and you hear those banging sounds, right? Like, um, I'm going to do it for you right now, ladies and gentlemen. Like that. If you got that going on, remember this. I told you, Mikey Pipes told you right now. November 16th at 9.36 in the video, in the morning, water is violently exploding when steam hits it. Every time you hear that bang, it's like a wrench being smashed up against the pipe. And that's that water where it shouldn't be. And that water's there because it's clogged. It can't make its way back to the boiler. All right. We took a little bit of a bath here. It's a little bit. My boots are kind of wet, but my socks are dry. <laughs> um, I used a wire brush on my, um, my drill right there. And I cleaned off it as best I could. We want a nice, smooth... Uh, surface for our fitting when we put it here and press it on uh, we don't want any of the paint in the way any imperfections in the pipe we want that nice to the best um, to the best we can make it now rigid does make a tool that goes on here um, I find that it kills drills so what works best for me is a wire brush and uh, we do it that way all right I put on the two inch jaw for mega press onto the fitting which is a two by inch and a quarter, reducing coupling. I'm using my wrench as a crowbar. It's all about the leverage. And I got that in there and I just pushed it out a little bit. You don't wanna push it out too much where you could crack something, disturb something, but she's on there. Peter's gonna take the M18, Force Logic, hook it up, and it's not doing anything right now. But we're also gonna make sure that we are fully up. Ready? Here we go. Okay, go. And just like that, a la peanut butter sandwiches. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, a few minutes to 10 in the morning. Um, before I extended this piece of inch and a quarter pipe, by the way, there's a mixture between L and M tubing. Uh, before I extended this into there, I cut a piece of inch and a quarter and I used an inch and a quarter um, press 90 and I pressed that in here, wiggled that in, turned it, connected it with an inch and a quarter by one inch reducing coupling. Now, the previous plumber who was here, they had a failed wet return that was, was inch and a quarter in size. You can see by the reducing male adapter they used right there. Um, for some unknown reason, they size down to one inch. That's a no-no, but I kind of felt bad changing it for the customer. So we kept that. We got a solid length here. We have our coupling right there. We're going to put a strap here and then a 90 and utilizing the Webstone inch and a quarter flush valve to ball valve directional so I can be I can flush from here if I needed to here if I needed to um, or actually close off flow with the purge valve closed um, above that I just used an inch and a quarter by six inch uh, black nipple cut the threads off one end with the bandsaw I used the blue monster PTFE tape with the pro dope on uh, my threaded connections and here uh, this is a mega press by Apollo that reducing uh, coupling, two inch by inch and a quarter. And once we finish cleaning up, we'll be good to go. All right, this was one of the radiators that I think needed to be off, right? Did this one need to be off, this radiator? No, this, this one. That one. Let's see, there we go. It's nice and hot now. There's a bit change in the house, so 
At one point, they all got hot at the same point together. All right. all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you happen to have a steam system and you live in the New York metropolitan area like Long Island, um, Pipe Doctor is located in Woodmere, New York, which is in the, part of the five towns uh, in the southwestern corner of Nassau County on Long Island in the great state of New York. Uh, my phone number is 516-348-6300. Uh, we service all of Nassau County, parts of, of Suffolk County, up to Route 231. From Route 231 to the Sagatos, we have an extra trip charge there. If you live in Brooklyn or the Bronx, there's an extra trip charge for that as well. Um, I said it costs money to get to you, and I don't work for free. But I would love to help you if you got a steam system or a hydronic system or anything else like that. You're tired of dealing with a mediocre company um, or just hacks that are just using bubble gum and double tape double tape and duct tape to put it together um call a professional 516-348-6300 my email address is mike at mikeypipes.com we have video comfort uh consultations available fifty dollars for half an hour and it's a tax deductible donation sorry fifty dollars for 15 minutes and it's a tax deductible donation thank you so much for watching be well god bless stay safe